नमो जिणाणम नमो जिणाणम नमो जिणाणम टुडे आई विल स्टार्ट विथ ए वेरी न्यू एंड इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ऑन दी बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन द नेचर यू नो दैट बायोडाइवर्सिटी इज एवेलेबल इन एंटायर नेचर सो वी विल डिस्कस दिस बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन द प्रिज्म ऑफ जैनिज्म एंड द मॉडर्न बायोलॉजी द वर्ल्ड बायोसिट बायोडाइवर्सिटी मीन्स द वेराइटीज ऑफ द लाइफ on our planet are called the biodiversity whatsoever the different kinds of the lives are there in the universe that covers under the biodiversity biodiversity is an abbreviated word for biological diversity that is the bio means the life and diversity means the variation so whatsoever the variation is there, there in the life on the universe it covers under the biodiversity which includes the total number of all races variety genus and species and some of the total various types of the microbes microorganisms plants and animals that is the total number of the fauna and the flora all are covered under the biodiversity in jain system it is called the jeev samas that is the 84 lakhs yoni 44 lakh yoni that is from the birth place what we call it as a birth place and it is from the maternal side which is divided into the immobile and the mobile jeevas that is the sthavar jeev and the trash jeevs so in the jain system there are two kinds of the organisms one is the sthavar jeev that is the immobile and another is the trash jeev which have the mobility while in biological sciences all living organisms are divided into the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom so in the biology the entire living organism is divided into the two domain one is the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and this animal kingdom are further divided into the various classes subclasses orders phylums etc and similarly in the plant kingdom is also it is divided into the various classes orders genus species and so on but in jain system there is only one kind of the classification that is the sthavar and the trash jeevas it is believed that the scientific facts of the different schools of the thoughts can help in better understanding of some of the great questions such as how biodiversity or this variation is created amongst the individuals you will see that there is a great range of variation from individual to the individual within a species there is a great number of the variation within the genus there is a great number of variation within the classes there is a great number of variation so how this variation is created how this variation is generated in the universe this is a matter of study so uh, therefore an attempt has been made to understand the causes of this variation in the prism of jainism and in the modern biology and also give some details of variation in body structure of living organisms for this if we see the different theories of the evolution the scientific perspectives we see that the darwin says give the theory of evolution lemarck says given the theory of evolution and the debris also have given the theory of evolution if you see the lemarck's theory of evolution that is the inheritance of the acquired character this concept of evolution suggested by the lemarck the whatsoever the character you have acquired physically you have acquired that character will inherent from generation to generation and the variation is to be created in the likewise the darwins also suggested that the struggle for the existence or the survival of the fittest what we call it as a or the overproduction these are the causes of variation 
but in this concept in this theories there are some of the limitations there are the some drawbacks that is according to lemark's theory uh, the evolution variation so obtained by the jeeva organism they are confined to a particular generation because that changes is taking place at the somatic level at the physical level not at the genetic level so they are not heritable this is the limitation for this both these theories because this whatsoever the changes we have obtained by the by the physical means they are not inherited because whatsoever the changes is going on at the genetic level or at the dna level whatsoever the changes we are done that will only inherit from one generation to the another generation so these are the some of the limitation of the drawbacks of the darwin's theory and the lemark's theory of the evolution later on the devries Hugo de Vries has given the mutation theory, and this uh, is the very acceptable theory because here in this case he suggested that the at the DNA level, whatsoever the changes is there, that change will inherit from parents to the offspring or from one generation to the another another generation. So these are the the uh, earlier scientific perspective of the variation or evaluation. Now you see that the genotypic variation. are considered as a heritable variation just, just as i have told, told you and environment variations are non heritable so whatsoever the changes are done by the environmental changes or by the by external means whatsoever the variation we are giving that are not heritable from one generation to the generation but the genotypic variations are are considered as a heritable generation heritable variation in living organisms originate naturally as well as from artificially also we can create the heritable variation but in the nature itself everywhere the uh, variations are going on one for this natural variation the gene recombination and the natural hybridization that is the outcrossing hybridization here means the outcrossing so this is the one of the natural way of creating the heritable variation that is another is the mutation that is the sudden heritable change which are going at the dna level or at the at the nuclear level whatsoever the changes is there they are of heritable nature and third is the polyploidy in which the entire genome is multiply as such in a duplicate form so these are the three natural ways of the heritable variation uh, uh, are mentioned uh, in in our textbooks according to biometrical and population genetics the difference among the individual to individuals are due to genetic constitution plus environment in which the populations are inhabited and the genotype into environment interaction that is the p, re p reflex p here p reflex for the phenotype that is the morphology or the appearance g is the genotype means the genetic constitution of the organism e is the environment and g into e is the environment genotype interaction here the g into interaction means the ecosystem where it is in the in the environment where the the organism is surviving and what what kinds of the interaction that that uh, organism having with that environment it comes under the ecosystem so g into e interaction comes covers under the ecosystem so these are the three ways means by which the morphology or the phenotype of the organism is dependent so the phenotype is is actually the genotypic constitution of the organism plus the environment in which the uh, organism is uh, growing or inhabited and their interaction with this so these things are mentioned here now you see that each and every character of the living organism is governed either by one gene we call it as a monogenic character if it is governed by the two gene it is called the digenic or oligogenic character or if it is governed by the many genes it is called the polygenic character so these are the some of the genetic terms i am not going to explain these things in detail just for a sort of reference i am telling you that what science says about the genetic changes what science says about genetic changes and what agam or what the genism said what the gen philosophy says about the variation this i will come later on just i am talking about the scientific variation so in the first one that is the gene gene recombination this is the natural system in which natural system you that you will observe that in the nature itself 
the the variation is going on continuously at the time of the meiosis or type of the cell division there are two types of the cell division one is the mitotic cell division another is the meiotic cell division we call it as a reduction cell division so the meiotic cell division is taking place in the reproductive cells that is in the in the testes or in the ovaries this kind of the reproduction is taking taking place uh, of the meiotic cell division where the chromosome number is reduced to half but in this meiotic system a one stage is there there are different stages in which one stage is there in which there is the pairing of the homologous chromosome homologous chromosome here means the maternal and paternal chromosomes so you see that in a, in, a, in a cell we have the a pairing of the homologous chromosome in which say for example in human beings we have 46 chromosomes so 23 chromosomes are from the paternal side and 23 chromosomes are from the maternal side so these chromosomes the pairing of the homologous chromosome is taking place so this is one one of from the paternal side and this is another from the paternal side so this pairing is taking place in pachytin stage and after that you will see that there is a, there is a crossing over and chiasma formation is there so this is the, the, the each chromosome have the two chromatid and the crossing over is taking place here just you see that this is the crossing over point so where the, the chromosomes the, the chromatids are touching here it is known as the chiasma and at this point the, the exchange of the genetic material exchange of the gene is taking place so a new recombinant is formed at the end so this new recombinant have the a different configuration than what we are having in the parental uh, chromosomes in homologous chromosome so you just see compare this one third one and you compare this first one so you see that uh, this uh, entirely a different structure is there so this have the different genetic constitution and this first one have the different genetic constitution so in this way the when the genetic constitution will change definitely a variation will come out and that variation is of inherent nature because that that variation is of genetic nature so it will transmit from parents through the offspring or from parents through the progeny so this is the one natural cause of the variation that is the gene recombination another is the mutation where the sudden heritable change occurs and these mutations in which the uh, natural mutations which is going on the one is the gene mutation that is the point mutation as i earlier in my earlier lecture i told you that because the, the uh, nucleotide of the dna is composed of the three things one is the uh, nitrogenous base another is the phosphate and one is the sugar so these three things togetherly constitute a one nucleotide but if there is some change at a nitrogenous base definitely its counterpart will change and resultant you will say that different kinds of the uh, strand will form and variation will be created another is the chromosomal aberration means in which the entire chromosome is to be changed either some part of the chromosome is deleted or some part of the chromosome is duplicated or some part of the chromosome is reciprocate translocation and some part of the chromosome in which the inversion is taking place so these are the some of the various natural means in uh, which creates the variation in individual individual to individual and third one is the polyploidy means the dupli duplication of the genomic set that is the polyploidy these these very uh, 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 mutations they are the natural mutation but in artificially for experimental purpose in the laboratory we are also able to create the uh, variation or the mutation or the changes nowadays this practice is very common we are do, treat the material with uh, some mutagens like the chemical mutagens like the mms ems ei and the physical mutagens that is the x rays beta rays and gamma rays and you see that a genetic engineering nowadays the technique has come out in which we entire gene makeup or this setup we are changing here so these are the various artificial means by can we we can we are able to create the variation in in the organisms now you see that as i have told you earlier that how the point mutation that is gene mutation is taking place that is the this always the cytosine nitrogen base is pair with the guanine and adenine is always pair with the thymine but if by accident if the cytosine is changed by some another nitrogen base say for example if the cytosine is changed by the adenine then in place of pairing this cytosine with guanine it will pair with the thymine 
So the the pairing by, by single change in the nucleot nucleot uh, this uh, nitrogenous base, the entire sequence will change. And when the sequence will change, you will see that the messenger RNA or the triplet code will change. And when triplet code will change, the messenger RNA will different kinds of messenger RNA will form, and the different kinds of the hormones will form. And when the hormone will different kinds of hormone will form, that hormone will ultimately affect on the phenotype or the morphology of the individuals. So this thing you can very well understand that is by a single change in a nitrogenous base. So this G T A C these are the nitrogenous base. of the nucleotide a single change in this case will change the entire morphology entire shape size of the organism now uh, now we come to the some gen concept this is all about a, a scientific concept so far i have told you in a brief just from the reference point of view i am not going in detail or to explain all these things it is just for your reference or for your idea point of view according to the gen concept you see that before death or end of the body functioning the soul fixes next paryay you you try to understand this thing that whenever a soul is departed from the body that is at the death time soul is departed from the body so before departing the soul from the body the next paryay in which next paryay in which paryay the rebirth will takes place it is decided right at that moment right at before living or before departing the soul so whether a departing soul will go in which paryay whether it will go in manushya paryay or it will go in tirenj paryay or it will go in dev paryay or it will go in the narki paryay in which form this rebirth will takes place it is decided prior to departing so this is a very important concept in the in the gen system so and for this when the soul is departing the the soul fix the nam karma or the ayu karma what you call that this what nam karma so according to the nam karma or the ayu karma that soul will go and took birth uh, rebirth in the next generation so this is the important thing here that the soul before departing from the body the in which reai that that soul will enter and take the rebirth it is prior to decide it and the migratory soul what we call the migratory soul possesses the ayu karma and the nam karma these ka nam karmas will determine that in which place that soul will go and take rebirth so this nam karma soul play the important role in determining the morphology or shape size etc of the jeev which are mainly responsible for the existence of all kinds of the biodiversity in all kinds of the species found in the universe so i think it would be very clear to you that the nam karma which are having or the ayu karma which are having in the migratory soul this migratory soul nam karma they are responsible that what would be the shape in the rebirth Uh, uh child or in the rebirth embryo uh, it will be determined by these nam karmas now here i would take the another aspect when the soul take rebirth in the new body is to be formed the power to develop this new body is called the bio potential so what is the power which, which is responsible to develop the different organs in the body so these are the bio potentials these bio potentials are the power and exist due to the fruition of the bio potentials nam karma ye paryapti nam karma this because the nam karma in which the paryapti nam karma there are 42 kinds of nam nam karma in the next slide i will show you in which the paryapti nam karma or the bio potential nam karma they are responsible in the formation of the what kind of the body will be there and what kind of the sense organs will be there and so these things will be decided by the paryapti nama karmas so this paryapti nama karma is responsible for, uh, and these paryapti nama karmas are of six type one is ahar paryapti food biopotential sharir paryapti body biopotentials indri paryapti sense organ biopotentials swasochhas paryapti means the respiration biopotentials and bhasha paryapti speech biopotentials or mana paryapti that is the mind biopotentials so these potential biopotentials are responsible 
for the development of all these things. Now you see that these biopotentials are completed in antar murta. Whenever the migratory soul took place, rebirth in the when it, this migratory soul goes and enter in the zygote, uh, so the, all the paryaptis, the six paryaptis, it will completed in the antar murta time. Here in antar murta time means the forty eight one 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 samay less than the forty eight minutes. So this forty eight minutes comes in according to the Jain philosophy. The antar murta comes under the forty eight minutes. So all the bio potentials that is the Six biopotentials. They are completed within forty-eight minutes. There are further descriptions are there also. Dr. Anil Kachara sir will discuss about all these biopotentials and all these things. I am not going in more detail about these biopotentials and the pran also. So likewise, as the biopotential is a power, likewise the pran is also power. Pran that is the vital powers. Four vital powers is essential for life. it manifest in the form of various vital functions of the body these powers are divided into 10 groups so the four vital powers are there which are further extended into the 10 these are the ayu naam ayu pran swasochwas pran respiration pran body pran speech pran mind pran and the five prans that is the indriya pran so these are the 10 prans which are comes under the four categories One is the ayu pran, respiration pran, bal pran, and fourth one is the indri pran. So, one one ayu, and the second one is the respiration, one respiration, and bal. Bal means me three, man, vachan, and kai. So, the three bal and the five in the sense organs. So, in this way, total ten prans are there, which are confined into the four, four main categories. Now, here one thing I would like to. Uh, concentrate here in one thing i would like to underline that except ayu ayu pran nine vital powers or prans and the six biopotentials are cause and effect relationship so these pran and the biopotentials they have cause and effect relationship the pran are the cause and biopotential is the effect because the pran they give this energy support to the biopotential so the all or organs are developed so the pran and the biopotentials they have the cause and effect relationship karan karya sambandh what we call it is karan karya sambandh so the pran is karan and the biopotentials are the karya so when the migratory soul comes it will brings the pran as well as the biopotentials and the individuals will develop all the organs in the embryo develops the uh, uh, different part uh, in the in the at the time of the birth so this thing is should be very clear and understood to us now as far as the variation is concerned in agam or you can say in jain philosophy the 40 84 yonis Chorasi lakh yoni hai. This 84 that is the birthplace, and it comes under the maternal side. The 84 yoni means where the birth is taking place. The birthplace is known as the yoni. So this is from the 84 lakh yoni hai. Then this is all details about the 84 lakh yoni. In ki sari details, these things I have mentioned here. I would not like to spell out all these things here. Similarly, if we go towards the paternal side then you will see that it is further expanded up to 199.5 lakh kul koda kodi this is alok ganit technique so here you see that itne lakh kul koda kodi so many so many times higher than this 84 lakh yonis so parental side have the large number as compared to the yoni or as compared to the maternal side so you see that these numbers these numbers are unchangeable these numbers whatsoever the number is there are mentioned here it is unchangeable from years together these numbers are the same at the time of the adinath bhagwan at the time of rishabh dev bhagwan the number is the same or at the time of mahavir bhagwan at the time of lord mahavira this also number is same so the number is not at all change the whatsoever the variation whatsoever the type of the classification mention it is remain same it is not changeable but you see in the science what you see observe in the science 
in biological science the estimated numbers are regularly changes they are unable to identify the genus they identify to unable to identify the different species so so far published genus are only around 5.1 lakh itne this jeev is only they have identified in the at a genus level and 8.7 million species on at earth is reported by the scientist which are changeable and still crores of the jeeves are there they are not identified by the science by the biology so 80% are still unknown but in the in the in the agam in the jain philosophy all living organisms are under the knowledge of the omniscient and these these are mentioned here in 84 lakhs yoni and 199.5 lakhs kul koda kodi so this is the difference what you say that one is under the knowledge of the omniscient and another is under the knowledge of science and that is that the scientists have only the mathi gyans their knowledge is limited and unable to to identify all the genus and species so our our knowledge or the scientist knowledge is limited while the omniscient knowledge is unlimited you say that the so which under the knowledge of each and everything in the omniscient in scientific perspectives whatsoever variation and changes obtained are limit up to the body level in other words changes are only at the pudgal level or at or at the matter level may be at somatic level or at the gametic level or at gamete level sperm or or raj or vir level or at dna level so changes made at gamete level or the sperm or or oval ovum level at dna level are of heritable nature and transfer of one generation to another generation that is from parent to the offspring or parent to the progeny so somatic cell level changes are not heritable changes as what i have explained to you earlier when the, now the here important thing which i would like to emphasize here is that when the migratory soul vigragati ka jeev enters in the zygote 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 is the union of the sperm and ovum zygote But so when the migratory soul enters in the zygote for the purpose of rebirth at that time the different types of the nam karma play the important role in determining the architecture of the body and the internal and external organ in systematic and predetermined way this is a very very important thing which one should be know that whatsoever the zygote is formed at at the time of conceive at the time of fusion of the male and female gamete the zygote is formed that zygote is a matter that zygote is a matter that zygote is a pudgal that has the dna of the maternal and the paternal mata aur pita dono ke chromosomes same wahan par it chromosomes so that zygote but the soul is not there at that time in the in the zygote soul is not there but when a migratory soul enter into this zygote then you say that life will start there and that migratory soul possess the nam karma and the ayu karma accordingly the, the you said that the function of the dna will taking place and that function of the dna will regulate by the nam karma as in my previous previous lecture i will explain you that the regulatory gene of the dna will governed by the nam karma so the nam karma will took place on the regulatory gene and that regulatory gene control the function of the dna so accordingly the architecture of the body the shape size and all the internal and external organs they are to be formed so this thing is to be predetermined in the nam karma form so in this way the nam karma act as a architect or artist or a chitrakar which are mainly responsible for all kinds of the biodiversity right from nigot to the five sense the rational jeev so so small sukshma jeev nigodiya jeev to the five sense the complex organ it means all the body making karmas they are playing the role and this body making karma naam karm they act as a artist or act as a chitrakar like a chitrakar making the paint or it will prepare the different figures and colors and everything is to be painting is done by them likewise this nam karm is doing all kinds of the uh, uh, chitrakari and the body of the organism will form 
Now the cause and effect relationship in birth of the living being. Now one thing would again I would like to emphasize that the cause and effect relationship. So a just I have pointed out that a instrumental cause that is the nimitt favorable under the dravakshetra kal and bhav. When there are favorable dravakshetra kal and bhav is there that is the genotype environment and genotype into environment interaction it will comes under the nimit karma or instrumental into instrumental cause when a zygote the zygote whatever the zygote is formed it is a nimit it is a instrumental cause the main thing that is the upadan or that is the substantive cause is the migratory soul unless and until the migratory soul will not took place in the zygote the zygote will not convert into the embryo and no birth will be there so the migratory soul is the upadan what we call is a substantive cause and the genotype environment and environment interaction or what we call it as a zygote that is just a nimit nimit and that is just a instrument so this is a having a, a you can say the cause and effect relationship it should be very clear in your mind that whenever the rebirth is take whenever the birth is taking place at that time the zygote is formed that is the fusion of the sperm and ovum this is just a nimit or instrumental cause or unless and until a migratory soul that is vigragati ka jeev unless and until it took place in the zygote then only the zygote will start functioning and that a single cell zygote will divide into two cell four cell eight cell and a uh, sixteen cell and multiply in this way or a ball shaped structure that is known as the blastula stage is formed and then later on again divide and divide in mitotic cell division a gastrula stage is formed and then different organs of the body is to be formed in the embryo so this is all about the mechanism where we, we should understand here so this thing is very uh, clear and interesting to you for to note it the migratory cell act as a driver without this zygote is no case will convert into the embryo just what i tell you that migratory soul is a driver unless and until the driver will not sit on the zygote that zygote will not convert into the embryo net not convert into the a baby so no birth will takes place since uh, science give explanation up to the zygote formation science talk about only up to a mater level pudgal level ki baat karta hai science but science do not explain how the migratory soul come how it will took place how the naam karma will come how the naam karma will function this the science science is silent about it so science only give the explanation up to the zygote formation level means that is at the pudgal level or at the mater level uh, but not at the uh, soul or at the uh, migratory soul or karma level after that zygote will not convert into the embryo unless and until migratory soul having the naam karma took place in the zygote without upadan karan that is substantive cause no birth of the child is taking place here zygote and other genetic factors act as a nimitt karan so it should be very clear and very interesting to note it now according to the biological science fusion of the male and female gamete that is raj or viri what we call in agam which contains all genetic information of the maternal and paternal characteristics of the zygote so the what zygote is formed fusion of the sperm or ovum sperm have the characteristics of the parent, male parent and the ovum have the characteristic of the female parent so when they are joined together 23 chromosome from the female and 23 chromosome from the male they come together and 46 chromosome in the zygote is to be formed so so and then later on the the mitotic division will takes place here so the source of biosegregative variation in the individual is taking place by the crossing over and ectasma formation which i have explained uh, you earlier but here in the zygote and further only the mitotic cell division is there before the mitotic cell division in the variation is to be created in the meiotic cell division means at the formation of the gametes and that is that is the reduction division it is a scientific term which i would not like to go go in details about this only the the biologist can know well about all these things biological science believe that dna carry the coded information according to which the design shape size and construction 
structure growth and development of the body takes place but according to the jain philosophy naam karm regulate and control the pro- control in provide and provide the essential ingredients for the function for the construction of the body so naam karm is provide what ingredient is required what kind of the hormones is required that means for the construction of the house we need a bricks we need a cement we need a iron or we need so many things these are the ingredient for the construction of the house likewise for the construction of the body a different kinds of the hormones is required so these hormones and the enzymes they they are are acting as a, a ingredient and these are governed by the naam karma through regulatory gene on the dna which i have explained you well in my previous lecture now achar now i have come to the some scripture levels uh, achar kund kund dev in pravachan sar describe that naam karma which determines the various physical characteristics of the living beings which overcome the true nature of the soul and makes different forms that the paryay that is of human beings paryay or sub human beings paryay celestial paryay ya helis paryay so acharya kund kund dev pravachan sar gatha number stanza number 117 they have uh, explained this thing very well in a prakrit language कमणम सम्भावनो सहवेण अभिभूय नरती नैरय वासुर मुकुणी सो ये दीज फोर पर्याय नर नर पर्याय तिरियम तिरियंच पर्याय नरे न नरक पर्याय और सुर तिरिया देव पर्याय सो दीज ऑल फोर फॉर्म्स of the paryas they are governed by the naam karma what the acharya kund kund explain in 117 gatha in the stanza 117 similarly the the human beings sub human beings celestial and helis which are in fact shaped by their own naam karma and not have not realized their true nature these these different shapes are the result of विभाव द्रव व्यंजन पर्याय ये जो शेप डिफरेंट शेप्स है आपके वो दीज शेप्स आर एक्चुअली ए विभाव द्रव व्यंजन पर्याय ये विभाव स्वभाव नहीं दीज आर नॉट स्वभाव दीज आर नॉट द नेचर दे आर यू से ए अन नेचर ऑफ द सोल एंड फॉर दिस डिफरेंट पर्याय फॉर दिस शेप्स दे आर गवर्न बाय द कर्मास द कर्मास आर हेल्ड रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ दिस शेप and these karmas we are held responsible for these different kinds of the shape uh, uh, in different paryas which are so the true uh, this is actually we are departing from the true nature of the soul whenever we are departing from the true nature of the soul the bondage of the karmas will be there and this bondage of the karmas will will are, are responsible for different forms of the life that is the human being sub human being celestials or helis and further like this is same way in alap padati devsen swami devsen swami in stanza number 20 suggested four kinds of unnatural forms of the life vibhav paryay the unnatural form vibhav paryay so all these four kinds of vibhav paryay they that is vibhav paryaya chaturvida nar naradi paryaya athwa chatur ek shriniya lakshya yojana yani ye चौरासी लाख योनियाँ हैं जिसके अंदर ये विभाव पर्याय के अंदर जीव भ्रमण करते रहते हैं दे आर दे आर सर्कुलेटिंग दीज वर्ल्डली सोल्स इन ऑल दी फोर काइंड्स ऑफ दी रेलम्स सो वट यू सी दैट द स्वभाव द्रव व्यंजन पर्याय इन द सिद्धास इन द सिद्ध और द लिबरेटेड सोल देर इज ए स्वभाव द्रव व्यंजन पर्याय वेयर देर इज देर इज स्टेगनेशन and the shape size of body etc they are remain stagnant because there is no body no karmas are there re free from the karmas so siddha are completely free from the karmas they have only a, a formless body what we call it is a formless body and that will remain stagnant so whatsoever the shape which we are obtaining it is governed by the naam karma and we we, we ourselves are res- responsible these are the physical uh, karmas and these physical karmas are are generated by ourselves and we are responsible for all these things once we eradicate these physical karmas and we got the liberated stage then you see that a a, a formless st- uh, st- 
uh, stage that is the liberated soul in Siddha's avastha in Siddhalaya, a permanent stage we will get uh, with a, a infinite pleasure and infinite uh, uh, power etc. So these are the four gatis. Here just picture I would like to show that the different shapes are there just for the uh, uh, for the sake of small knowledge. That is the, the hellish nariki, the, the tiryanch, manusha devata and the liberated soul. This is the fifth, fifth gati, liberated soul. Here this is the permanent stage. Once we attain this stage, then the soul will never come back uh, 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 in the in the world. Uh, for the different pariyas. So this is, uh, you can say the Paramatma, this is a liberated soul uh, where the stagnation is there and here the the, uh, uh, the, the krat krat soul is there which we have obtained everything and nothing is to be left to achieve more. So this is the liberated soul. Our, our aim is to be obtain this form mainly. Now the what I am talking about the uh, Nama Karmas. So the 42 types of the Nam Karma and if you go for for further details then you see that 93 kinds of the Nam Karmas are there. So this is the list of the different kinds of the Nam Karma. Due to shortage of time I would not like to explain each and every Nam Karma. So these 19 Karmas here here on this side uh, is, is, is a demeritous Nam Karma and on the right side these are the meritorious Nam Karma. So these are the different Nam Karmas which are responsible for all activities, whether we are getting the pleasure, we have the good sound or we have the good color or we have the good shape, size, whatsoever the thing which we are visible to us, that is are governed by the Nam Karma. The what thing is visible to us, it comes under the Nam Karmas, which we also call, called it as a No Karma. So as we, just for the sake of the knowledge, the Karmas, Drav Karma, Bhav Karma and, nam, nam, and No Karma. So, so the karms are differentiated into three broad categories. Drava karma, that is, as you know, that eight karms are there from first to eight. These eight karms are the are the drava karmas, in which first four are the ghatiya karma and the last four are the aghatiya karma. So these are the drava karmas. Eight karmas, they are the drava karmas. And another is the bhav karmas. Means bhav karma means means the raga dvesh and moha etc. They are included under the bhav karmas. That is the deceit, greed, anger, ego, and the deluding. All these things are covered under the bhav karma. And the no karma means the things which are visible to us. That is all things which is visible to us, whether it is a living or non-living things, which can we can see with with our naked eyes. They are comes under the no karma, like the body, claws, house, etc. All these comes under the no karma. So in this way, broad classification of the karma, drav karma, bhav karma, and no karma. And the no karma means means these karmas are governed by the nam karmas. That is the aghatiya karma. The nam karma is the no karma which will form all these kinds of the things here. Now the main conclusion put I would like to draw here that a biological science falls short in fully explaining the biodiversity in nature and also evaluation of species. Jainism attributes biodiversity to karmas and accept the role of genes and the environment in the growth and development of the body. Thus Jainism provide a complete theory of existence of living species, variations in the body, structure and diversity of the life. So this is a brief conclusion that Jain system explain each and everything. Jain system explain the science aspect also and Jain science aspect also, the Jain philosophy aspect also. But biological science explain only up to the Pudgal level, only up to the matter level or only up to the genetic level, not at the soul or the karma level. So this is a brief about all these things. Thank you very much. Jai Jainendra.